Sweet. Thanks. So, to my right is Josh Cook. I'm Scott Ramp, and you're joining us for Wake Up Missoula. Hey, guys, how are you doing? And how are you doing? I'm doing tired. You doing tired? Yeah, I'm pretty tired, so. Yeah. So. I'm still waking up. Yeah. You go outside for about a hot minute, and then you'll, uh, no, it's not necessarily hot outside, but uh, you're going to stay outside for a cold minute, because it, it is current, let's, we're going to jump right into weather. Yeah. 16 degrees. Cold. You know, you have a high of 30 today. Your low is going to be 22, so. Look at we're looking at 40 degree temperatures happening by Thursday, and then okay. pretty much kind of yeah that's okay. what it says on the National Weather Service. Uh, we're gonna have lows in the 14 by Thursday night, so it's gonna be pretty wide gaps of 30 degree uh, shifts throughout this weekend. But I'll get more on this as we get into our yeah. uh, Friday forecast. So I have to say on the way over, it felt like a lot less than 16. It was windy it's, it's when I when I got here. Very the windy, windy you know, they get the Hellgate Canyon over to our. Um, East, uh, <laughs> yeah. I always get east and west flipped around. I already, I always know so where south is. Direction. I always know where south is because south is where uh, Lolo Peak is, and Waterworks Hill is always north. Yeah, I only know south because of the hills, and then I just kind of, and also because I used to live in East Missoula, so I'm like, cool. I know my directions now. Yeah. And of course, you know, from the uh, weather, you saw that there is that 50% chance of snow today, which will uh, um, diminish as we get later on to the week. So you might see some fresh snow this week for uh, some people. Um, there's ex there's an expected amount of snow coming up in the future, but I'm not so sure. But we'll check on that a little bit later. Um, I got a lot of show for you guys. I got some new programs going to be in Aram, not MCAT. Um, we got... Um, uh, some events. We got some news, which you know brings me into all of my news stuff. So let's talk about some of the new stuff. Okay, so earlier this semester, I'm sure you heard about the University of Montana having asbestos in the McGill Hall. Yeah, isn't that fun? So they have 70 kids that are displaced, and these are 70 kids who are you kind of like rotating in and out of daycare at the University of Montana. And they're just like, what are we going to do with all of these kids? So one of the suggestions is to go to the Missoula College, but right now they're just trying to determine where they're going to put them. Because right, as of right now, the, the, the most popular choice is the library within the new Missoula College, which has students at the Missoula College saying that uh, universities think, should think about students first and not the students' children. So, you know, it's, a, oh, weird. it's an interesting mixed bag of things. But I can understand if you have a bunch of kids in a daycare situation in a place at a library where you're supposed to do some studying. Yeah. That's a, it's definitely a rock and a hard place, you know? Yeah, it really is. Cause you need, cause also, you, there's just like asbestos everywhere, yeah. I guess. And the parents usually pay an installment for their daycare uh, for their kids, you know, professors, you know, students, who, you know, non-traditional students who have kids there, yeah. all that stuff. So that's just something that um, the university is going through right now because this has been a pretty bad semester for the University of Montana. Dude, it's been rough this year. <laughs> yeah. It's been very rough. There's a lot going on. Uh, I heard they were raising tuition. Oh, yeah, because they've had a tuition freeze since 2011. Yeah. Or even earlier than that, it's 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 been kind of like at that point where they haven't been able to do it. But you know, there's not enough students going to the school, so they don't have enough money to support a lot of the classes. So there's just a lot going on. State news: What is the coldest place in Montana right now? Here? No. It, in the uh, state of Montana, what it it, it 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 made the record is the coldest place in the lower 48 states. Oh. Um, and it's here in Montana. Is it somewhere in the valley? It is definitely somewhere eastern Montana for sure. Yeah. Uh, many places there have been seen lower temperatures in the negative 38 degrees, 40s. Oh, this one God. is negative 50 degrees in Antelope, Montana, which is eight what? miles south of Plentywood, Montana. I don't know either of those places. Which is uh, pretty much um, 80 miles to uh, Williston, North Dakota, just near the border, northern border of Montana. Yeah, I kind of like that antelope. That's nope. a fun name. Right? So clear skies, fresh snow on the ground, and an arctic blast of cold from Canada is the perfect recipe for chilling temperatures. Next week, the area will only see maybe a high of zero degrees with temperatures lingering in the negative 20 degrees. And that negative 50, they also mentioned, meteorologists says, is that's without wind chill. Jeez. Yep. So one of the coldest I, places in the lower 48s is negative 50. And it's eight miles south of Plentywood. I'm so excited. And there's so many cold pockets, too, because there, there's another record in Montana, which also has the, the most um, temperature change, because um, this was in, I think it was Glasgow, Montana. And at one uh, part of the day, it was 48 degrees. Yeah. And then there was a cold spell. And within the hour, it got down to negative 48. We have a town called Glasgow? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool little town. Um, a lot of people would probably uh, drive through it if they're on their way to uh, Minnesota. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, Never been. Let's talk about some national stuff. Of course, you know, uh, while Dems are looking uh, to get plenty of leads on the Michael Cohen hearing, out of, uh, left for a special committee hearing just last week. Trump was in Thailand with North Korea to Kim Jong-un. But for right now, um, the Dems are kind of holding back while they're waiting for special uh, investigator Robert Mueller to report on his in investigation of Trump and uh, the, uh, the Russian ties. Uh, of course, anyways, a state emergency in Alabama has been dealing with the aftermath of a tornado that killed 23 people. Uh, Recovery yeah. efforts are in place as officials continue to search as long as necessary to make sure they haven't missed anyone. They hope to be able to shift from search and rescue to recovery status on yesterday. President Trump says he pledged to, uh, to his unwavering support to the residents of Lee County. He will visit affected areas in Alabama uh, on Friday and will meet with Governor Kay Ivey. 170 mile per hour winds ripped through Macon County, Lee County lines around two o'clock. From there, it went from Beauregard community area progressed across uh, southern portions of Lee County, just north of Smith Station. Residents have been told that they can start pushing debris on their property, uh, out on the edge of the roadways for eventual pickup. So that's kind of what's happening there right now. Um, they're getting some recovery after it's like a good amount. Yeah. So that kind of does it for all your new stuff. I got a couple new programs. And then when I come back, we're going to be talking about um, some um, City Council stuff. Uh, there's a lot of things happening with the transition from uh, they're closing this warming center at the Salvation Army. So the city's kind of trying to figure out what they're going to do since what temperatures are still very cold. So we're getting on that a little bit more right after a highlight video from um, a dude I just drew, yeah, I which is going to be uh, airing this week, um, starring our very own Josh Cook. So here's a little yeah. taste of what you guys can expect. <laughs> Everybody and welcome to Dude I Just Drew, episode five. And um <laughs> I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I dropped my coin. This, uh, I have my drink of choice. Yeah, uh, present yourself. Uh, my name is Joshua Dean Cook the first. And it's what, me what again, that Mel, and your, your host. My name is Joshathan Deaneth Cook the first of thin. Okay, uh, um... I've been what? <laughs> a dragon on a sailboat trying to find the Loch Ness Monster. How long do you need to let others determine the future for your children? Are we not warriors? When our ancestors went into battle, they did not know what the consequences were going to be. All they knew is that if they did nothing, things would not go well for their children. Do not operate out of a place of fear. Operate out of a place of hope. Hey guys, welcome back. We're talking about some city council stuff. So kicking off is the public comment. Um, Doug Grimm, Rattle Second Neighborhood, uh, thinks the cold is good for the city of Missoula and Montana. We have lost a tremendous number, many square miles, of our pine trees in Montana because we haven't had weather like this on a regular basis. My understanding is, and I've been, this is my memory from many years ago, is that we need to get the temperature down to minus 20 degrees for three days in a row, and the spruce bud bark beetle larva are killed. Now, it doesn't have to get down to minus 20 right here on Higgins Avenue, but it's really nice if it would do it up there where the trees are growing. Okay. That's why I like this cold winter that we're having for a few days. Thank you. 
<laughs> All right, so that was his public comment about basically uh, the cold is good for Montana because it helps kill the bark beetles that have basically devouring most of our uh, pine trees in the mm -hmm. state of Montana for the last couple of years. Um, it's a big deal. Uh, a lot of the larvae uh, usually uh, go into hibernation when it's at a certain temperature, but since it hasn't been as cold, um, in recent years, not compared to this year, a lot of the bark beetles have been able to thrive in this warmer winter temperatures. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, you probably heard about all the bark beetle like deals and stuff, like no, the kind of like the stuff that the the the. My suggestion is to basically move all the trees to eastern Montana because then they don't have to worry about bark beetles because there's no trees in eastern Montana and just basically clear out the Wouldn't forest. Would just be moving the bark beetles over there though? Yeah, but they have colder extreme temperatures because like, um, uh, you know, like, like if you have it longer days of colder temperatures, the bark beetle cannot survive extreme cold temperatures. Okay. But of course, then that also has the risk of the trees dying yeah. from extreme cold temperatures. Honestly, so now I just really want to see what a bark beetle looks like. Yeah, they're uh, basically like little gnats that bury themselves into trees, and then the larva eats the trees from the inside out. Oh. Okay. And then when they grow, they spread to another tree, lay their eggs, and that's how the trees die. A real parasite. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, back in the day, the trees could pretty much survive it, but uh, with the uh, the amount of the population growing, it's been kind of ridiculous. And even the prevention measures are just as bad, if not worse, because they are very flammable. <laughs> with the, the spray oh, no. that they used to prevent on the trees, they were extremely flammable for oh, fire no. season. So yeah, it's a cool. it's a rock and a hard place situation, much like the university. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, Josh Decker, um, he's talking about homelessness strategy, and he's talking a bit of, a bit about uh, how um, we can initiate uh, a special cost sharing initiative. So Josh Decker gives an example of how we can solve homelessness in Missoula. I want to talk to you about commercial and residential linkage fees or impact fees and how those could help provide funding solutions for council to address the uh, larger issue of housing crisis in Missoula. Um, rampant development uh, brings a host of issues, infrastructural, service related and social stratification being one of them. Um, issues of the unhoused are amongst those issues that come with development. And by applying linkage fees based on square footage, um, s communities such as Seattle, Boston, Denver, uh, Bay Area have acquired funding sources and uh, trade-off incentives for uh, low-income housing in their communities. All right, so basically um, um, I looked this up a little bit um, and I found out more information about uh, uh, it's called a commercial linkage pro program, and Boston has one of the oldest commercial linkage programs in the county. It costs, it charges about eight dollars per square foot of new uh, commercial development. So we have a new person coming in here; they have new commercial development. So it's an added kind of like tax to a lot of new businesses for eight dollars additional. Of course, while recent data is not available, between 1986 and 2000, Boston's linkage fees generated 45 million dollars in revenue, which funded nearly 5,000 affordable units to help fight homelessness in the Boston area. So that was just one of the suggestions. And uh, the city of Missoula, a lot of public comment has been about you know trying to support the city, trying to be like how we can figure out how to endless homelessness, because we've been having record numbers, and there's been a lot of uh, uh, stories saying that the Paul Varela Center has been at capacity and beyond, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, not unfortunately, but I actually have a quote from um, um, a Amy Allison from the Paul Varela Center, clears air about not being able to provide space for people. So this is her response to a lot of people saying that Paul Varela is bursting at the seams. Um, as you all know, we at the Pavarillo Center have been providing warming space during the day um, and have been for the past couple of weeks. Um, that has been going well during the day. We've been busy, um, busier than normal, but um, I see that as a good thing because I'm happy to be providing life-saving space, especially when it is so cold out. Um, I know a lot of the news articles recently have been stating that um, we are you know, over capacity every night and turning people away, and that's actually not been the case, but um, that has not been 
No one has called to ask me that, so um, that has not been confirmed. But I wanted to let you guys know that the Salvation Army has been extremely busy providing their overflow space. Um, I've been tracking and working closely with the Salvation Army and asking them what their numbers are looking like and comparing them with ours. Um, and what I've seen on the busiest night so far um, was uh, 245 people needing emergency shelter. And as you know, the Pavarello Center is able to provide 175. So um, I think um, the Salvation Army, the highest I've heard, they've slept around 70. Um, and so that's just something to keep in mind is that 245 number. I think as we continue through the next couple of weeks, I'll keep in contact with the Salvation Army to um, understand what numbers are looking like, and that I think will help us to have a better sense going into next winter. Unfortunately, in this position, I'm already thinking about next winter and what we're going to be doing, uh, but I look forward to having a community conversation this spring to really have a good plan going into next year um, and making sure we have a good plan in place. Um, I do want to thank the folks. All right, so that was Amy Ellison, and I just wanted to mention that the Salvation Army was able to raise $50,000 to promote their um, warming center. And basically, the warming center ran, um, well, the money-wise, the, the, uh, the, 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 the warming center was supposed to last from um, basically early December till March. And it is March now. And I, I haven't heard anything about them closing or anything like that. Uh, so far, they're still doing a lot of their services for people in need. I know that Mountain Line uh, recently w didn't open their doors because Mountain Line did use, utilize their uh, space as a kind of like a temporary warming place for people while they're in transportation to Salvation Army and beyond. OK, so uh, Gwen Jones, uh, she reflects on the frustration about funding um, programs that help in homelessness. So this is what Gwen Jones has to say in response to a lot of the public comments. Just wanted to clarify that sometimes these things aren't nearly as simple as they sound at first blush. Um, there was some references made to using um, MRA money, which there is a public art project being put into the MRL park. Um, that is all MRA money, which is highly regulated by state law and has to be spent within that district. That is not a bucket of money that we can take from and just put in a different area. So I just wanted to clarify that. Also, there was discussion regarding the fact that Bella Vista Field at Fort Missoula Regional Park um, needs some supplemental um, fill put on it to get it up to par. And um, that those district, the, I'm sorry, those funds come from the park district funds, which are dedicated to the operations of Fort Missoula Regional Park. They are under an interlocal agreement between the city of Missoula and the county of Missoula. And the city does not have the authority or discretion to just pull that money out of that bucket and put it in a different direction. So, All right, so Gwen Jones kind of like uh, uh, explains a little bit more about why they can't just like take money from one place and just put it towards ending homelessness. There's a lot of money in place that are for designated for certain areas. Um, c and with a lot of government like funding stuff, you got to use it or basically you lose it. That's the whole idea is like there's never that place where you can do less. They just give you less money if you do less. Anyways, so many issues comes of for allocating funds for the city. City didn't put any money towards the Salvation Army back when they requested the Salvation Army be approved for emergency warming center back in October. Uh, the city also mentioned that it would, since they already raised X amount of money, they would be perfectly fine with raising the rest of the money for the warming center at that time. Um, so Jesse Ramos, he reflects on the U.S. economy. So this is a completely different subject. I'm changing the subject. And this is very interesting. Um, I didn't really understand a lot of what he was saying, but I think it's a very uh, interesting aspect of how, like, how he was saying it. And um, I think this is, uh, uh, like, he kind of reflects on, like, the U.S. economy and how it's doing and, like, um, just how he's kind of, uh, I, 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 I I don't know. It, I'll let him explain. He, he has a little better better explanation on this. So here's Jesse Ramos. A little over a week ago, um, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell made his obligatory visits uh, to Congress for the year, and it consisted of the typical uh, posturing that you would expect on partisan lines where the Republicans were talking about how great the economy was, the Democrats were talking about how bad it was. Um, but I think one thing that was very much overlooked was um, the fact that Jerome Powell mentioned that um, the Fed had um, 
had their eyes set on a target goal of keeping inflation below 2% uh, annually. They wanted to keep inflation below 2% annually. And something that was missed in what Jerome Powell said to Congress was that now they want to keep uh, inflation at an average of 2%. So that is a huge distinction. That's going to be calculated over a 15-year time span. So there's no telling how high inflation can go. Um, there's also something that was recorded in the Federal Reserve minutes uh, two weeks ago. Uh, they were just released. It actually happened a month ago, but the minutes were released two weeks ago. Uh, where they said that they are no longer going to continue their quest for quantitative tightening. So basically what that means is that uh, during the recession in 2007 and 2008 and the years following, um, what happened is the Federal Reserve actually printed money um, through quantitative easing and used that money to purchase debt uh, from the government to fund the deficit because we didn't have enough money through taxes to fund the deficit. So basically what happened is the Federal Reserve printed the money uh, through quantitative easing and purchased their own debt. So they printed money here and then purchased debt um, from the government. And they assured us at the time that it was not monetary or it was not quantitative uh, – sorry, it was not debt monetization because um, – they were going to sell that. They were going to shrink their balance sheet through quantitative tightening, and they had a quantitative tightening program that was basically on autopilot, and what happened with the stock market in December um, caused them to completely reverse course. So instead of us now thinking we're in a rising interest rate environment, we're actually um, they're talking about not only keeping interest rates stable, but possibly lowering interest rates yet again, so um, flooding the market with cheap money, and they're no longer trying to shrink that balance sheet. So all the money, uh, all the debt that they purchased with the quantitative tightening, they're whole uh, sentiment was it was not monetization because they're going to sell off the debt eventually. All right. So that was uh, basically uh, kind of what's going on. What Jesse Ramos noticed is that um he believes that uh, the, you know, like as you know, like the U.S. economy, the dollar, of course, the value of the dollar is definitely going down. The way he's oh, describing right. it, so, uh, and not to mention, um, you know, because we're pr trying to pay off like deficits, so we're printing money that really doesn't exist to help pay off and offset some of those things. Not to mention, yeah. of course, the economy took quite a hit back when uh, the government didn't open back in December. And it's yeah. only open on a temporary basis. At, there's, they're trying to get a lot of the other programs kind of running and all that stuff. So there's just a lot kind of going on with the government and the economy as well as taking quite a hit. But of course, you know, Montana really never notices a lot of that. For the, for the most part, because we're already in poverty, the state of Montana is actually kind of like listed is, is one of the most poverty states in the, the, in the lower 48 states. Yeah, but that's why we don't really notice it until a certain degree. You know, like cost of living, lower wages is kind of like common here in Missoula. So. Yeah. And then, of course, I didn't, I didn't want to leave you guys on that uh, note because um, it's kind of like a sour note of, of, out of everything that kind of – it's, it's definitely a bummer, but that's kind of what's going on with city council. And you can watch the whole meeting. There's a lot of stuff that happened during the city council meeting, and I'm, I'm just giving you kind of like the fly over the highlights. Um, you can always go to the city of Missoula's website for uh, your own experience on how the city runs and operates and how you get permits and how to pay your water bill online, ci.missoula.mt.us. Your local source for everything City of Missoula. But your everything local source of everything MCAT and Missoula Television Station is MCAT.org. Um, once again, um, I just want to remind people that MCAT will be moving into the new library. Um, the groundbreaking ceremony uh, already happened. You can check it out. Um, if you click on the picture from our page, it will bring you to a live feed of the construction of the building. So that's where we're at so far. Look, they already got the, um, the support beams. They, they, they poured the concrete, and pretty much MCAT's going to be at the bottom corner of this one. So if you go the, the kind of like, I, if you look at the picture, it's like pretty much the top corner at this edge right here. And we're going to have a window where we'll be able to see the real L and the real M instead of this L and this M. Yeah, I mean, this one's pretty good, honestly. I know. L. It's great. It's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful yeah. uh, backdrop for sure. It's going to be interesting, like, just moving MCAT to a different location. Like, it's not very far away, but... It's still, like, another... It's, like, it's a whole other world. So it's going to be in the library? Yeah. Like part of the library. We'll be in the library under one roof. That's what... That, I mean, they wanted to like, kind of, like, have a new name for the library. They didn't want to call it, like, the library. It's, like, Missoula Community Space or something. Something like... Oh, it's Because okay. like, they wanted it to be, like, a, like a community center. Okay. Because it's not just a library, because it has MCAT, and it has, you know, Spectrum Discovery Center, Families First is going to be there as well. Okay, so it's kind of like this building, but less business, more community. Yeah, it's a very much community. We'll, we, we'll be pretty much be sharing a building with very like-minded folks as ourselves, which is very nice. Yeah, not like, yeah. you know, our next-door neighbors, you know, their first call, they're, uh, they're an IT that. group. I don't know them. 
yeah, they're just an IT group next door. They're like a conglomerate of IT people. Yeah, and, and they help people. Like there's the um, stringed instruments repair upstairs. Yep, they've been there for pretty much just as long as MCAT, if not uh, about oh, the same really? time. He's been there for a long time. Oh. He always has that uh, painted um, um, the car that's in the lot. It's pr it's a pretty oh, cool nice. car. Yeah, I'm sure you've uh, probably seen it around town driving around. Yeah, like every time he, every time he drives by me, he like recognizes me, which is weird because yeah. I don't really recognize him as much. But I guess he probably sees me coming MCAT ever so often. Yeah. Okay, so that's enough reminiscing about just like this and that. I do have a very special clip I wanted to show you guys. I didn't get a chance to show uh, it for the uh, the fifth year anniversary show. Um, be, uh, this is basically a, a conglomerate, a collage of all the art that has uh, basically been shown on um, my morning show. Um, a lot of this art is usually very time sensitive, so you don't get a really good chance to really see the art. but. I'm going to show you this ultimate art clip, but then when I come back, I'm going to give you an art guide to the downtown Missoula area since I didn't do your first Friday art guide last Friday. And for, without further ado, here is the, uh, the ultimate art collection uh, edited by our very own Rick Phillips. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey guys, welcome back. That was five minutes of art clip, like an art installation of our very own that Rick Philp edited for me just for my fifth year anniversary. And I wanted to show you, show it to you guys. I ran out of time last Friday because we had a very full show, but I just want to give you a chance to see that all. But you know, that's going to bring me up to my next segment, which is going to be a little bit more about uh, some some art stuff. So we're going to kick it over to uh, uh, over the shoulder, blocking <laughs> Josh. Whoa. The over-the-shoulder killed Josh. All right, so uh, special viewing. This is August Christian artwork at the Radius Gallery. You can check it out. It's going to be there until the end of this month. Um, but yeah, here's some of the installations. Um, it's uh, a very limited viewing of the artist collage and sculpture work. Up next, we got the uh, Colorado River by uh, Annie Eastwood. I don't know if she's related to Clint, but original oils and acrylic uh, and Blizzled, uh, uh, glacial prints of Grand Canyon National Park. And that's going to be at the artist shop. Uh -huh. uh, Balance <laughs> is going to be at the Four Ravens Gallery, so that's going to be on pretty much the month of March. You guys can check out Balance. This is art, sculptures, and um, principle of balance, making decisions that will create harmony out of um, experience. Up next, we got... This is from uh, the Gallery 709 inside the art, Montana Art and Framing, uh, Painted Birds and Painted Eggs. And this, obviously, is the Painted Bird. Uh, gallery 709 inside Montana Art and Framing presents Painted Birds and Painted Eggs. Sally Hickman paints birds spotted in her yard over 30 years and some Vincent van Gogh-inspired landscapes along with decorated eggs featuring traditional Ukrainian um, by local artist Kathy Howlett. Um, Judy Donovan, Bob Howlett, Barbara Morrison, Elizabeth service open first Friday, um, and then it's going to be running until about March 30th. Okay, two more art clips for you guys. Uh, this is noteworthy uh, paper and press. This is called The Cranium. Uh, the Cranium is form of 2015 form of a group of volunteers that participate in the Janet Rankin Peace Center's project to fold as many peace cranes as they can to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, and they usually put this out in um, the Missoula Art Museum, and it's a very beautiful installation, but you can check this out at Noteworthy Paper and Press um, as it's being done. Um, the last one is deterioration. Uh, like, you know, I'm gonna end the segment on a very just like uh, um, gloom note for sure, because as you can see, the, it's, the art is about deterioration. And this is gonna be at the Frontier Space. Sarah Sipling's opening of Deteriorate features traditional and digital printmaking with uh, photography, drawing, and painting to discuss aging and mental deterioration associated with Alzheimer's disease de and dementia, as well as memory and remembering. So that pretty much concludes all your art clips for you guys. If you, uh, are you okay down there? Yeah. <laughs> Do you uh, want to play a little song for us as we go into some events that are happening in Missoula? Because uh, sure, yeah. that's the only thing I got to do until I end the show is your events. Okay. Uh, you want me just to throw it to you? Yeah, sure. All right. Why not? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, got it. All Take right. the wheel, Jesus. Uh, I'll just uh, you know play some ambient stuff. Um, let me switch. Okay.
Oh, thank you, Josh. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, throw it back. Throw it back. Okay. Okay, cool. Sweet. And uh, that honestly made me think about Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Oh, sick. Right? Yeah. Right? It's just like, oh, well, thank you there, there Josh. Well, I really appreciate you. it. It's like it, when you bring that kind of joy to other people, yeah. it really just makes uh, the world just a better place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's talk about some events starting for your Wednesday. Hey, you like your pets? You want to paint your pets? Zach is doing a paint your pets to wait <laughs> to honor your pets starting at 9:30. So basically, right now, uh, but they do a bunch of classes and a bunch of cool themed this stuff as along with uh, their girls rock camp, which will be performing at the uh, family friendly Friday at the Top Hat sometime in March 16th. It's one of those Fridays. It's like mi- it's like middle of March Saturday, Friday. Anyways, but they're, they're right now they're doing they they love their pets and what better to honor them with a beautiful painting. And there's three hour workshop that's starting at right now and it goes until about noon it's about sixty dollars for people or fifty five dollars for members you can immortalize um your pets um the zach also is pet friendly location so you can bring your animal to paint them alive um empower place in tiny tales so um if you're if you want your kid to get engaged with reading while at the same time visiting the missoula food banks in power place uh, area for kids this is a great way for kids to get engaged with reading from birth to th- uh three years of age lifelong learning center they have a whole bunch of art classes happening to uh, have uh, all sorts of classes happening today um health and wellness they have over 50 and fit starting at 10 a.m you have bare fitness at 10 a.m 5 30 they're doing um continuing pilates cycling intervals, uh, booty yoga, um, pound fit, and ULA, all this stuff happening with lifelong learners and just all sorts of interesting things. Because I always notice that they do a lot of stuff. And also their learning center at Red Willow is doing an, the art of wellness and vitality, which is a yoga class. And it happens uh, basically 12 to 1. Um, Scrabble and Bridge, Missoula Senior Center, the best dance floor in Missoula. Um, is at the Missoula Senior Center. And so at 1230-ish, they have a Scrabble and Bridge thing because one starts at 1230 and the other one starts at like 1245. So I just say 1230-ish just to kind of get a scope. So you get a lunch and also get a, a destroy people at Scrabble or, and or Bridge. That, uh, does that say Makey Makey up there? Yes, and that's the spec- special activity in Spectrum Discovery Center. I Makey Makey those. is... Uh, is open for uh, visitors of all ages to explore science through engage in exhibits. Uh, it's uh, 812 Tool Avenue, just across from DraftWorks. 350 for anyone four and over, and if you're under three, you get in free. And the Makerspace is their extra special and hands-on activity from 3 to 5.30 p.m. Predator feeding at Missoula Insectarium. Uh, they will be feeding a cricket to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. every Wednesday. Join us as they explain and demonstrate how they consume predator, uh, captures and consumes their prey, come see who is hungry today. <laughs> I know, they, they, they have a really good play on words for sure. Yeah, um, it's a tongue twist. Right? Lights, camera, action, screenwriting 101. Hey, uh, the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is doing a screenwriters 101 um, thing starting at 6 p.m. You can enjoy, everyone has a short story including you, join the introductory level writing course and complete a short screenplay. So, you know, you just get some, you know, anything that helps with your screenwriting. Uh, Global Public Health, how Special Olympics is fostering international systems change. Tonight there is going to be a lecture starting at 6.30 p.m. It's Dr. Donner uh, Bainbridge, uh, PT, ED, D, A, T, R, E, T, all sorts of acronyms and all that stuff, has worked internationally with Special Olympics since 2001 as a global uh, clinical advisor for fun fitness and fitness programming. In this role, she's coordinating um, global development of fitness assessments and programming, um, training physical therapists how the fun fitness screening in their countries. She also coordinates the, uh, uh, the World Confederation of Physical Therapy Network for the Intellectual and develop, um, Developmentally Disabled disability and is on the steering committee for the health promotion in life and work network so a lot of this is happening global public health they do this in the gallagher business building room one two three and they usually do this uh most wednesdays at 6 30 p.m and if you missed it mcat will be broadcasting it on our channel starting in april i believe if not already um 3d printing class Missoula uh, Public Library, they have a 3D print, printing class pretty much every once a month, and it just teaches you guys about 3D printing. And I think it's really cool because they have a cool iPad where you can scan yourself, and you can make a 3D action figure of yourself. It's really cool. Oh, nice. Yep. I went there uh, just recently, and they were kind of showing that and whatnot. There's going to be a band tonight at the Walmart. It's called Young the Giant. Oh, yeah. They're popular. Yeah. Tell me about it. Do you know? What do you know about them? Because this is the first time I've ever heard of them. 
Oh, I mean they're popular, but I, I don't listen to them. Right. I, I think it's like there's, there's like there's so many names of so many bands and they're always touring around town and yeah. like it's it's always weird when like you, you, one of your friends is just like yo man you gonna go Young the Giant is like uh who's that is like you don't know who Young the Giant is you know it's like the Thinking Man's band yeah it's the Thinking Man's band I just read that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's uh it's rock. live show rock music probably indie rock so that's gonna be playing the yeah. Wama tonight as well definitely uh, more indie and of course you know if you're interested in going out tonight um most of the nights it's it's a karaoke night Badlander has karaoke uh eagles lodge has karaoke all sorts of places it's a wednesday wednesday night is like the karaoke night for people but also they have a bunch of bar trivia they got press box trivia they got uh, i think thomas marlboro has a bingo night um uh, they also have trivia at the broadway bar and grill and of course my f- personal favorite which is the silver slipper i, I go to that one don't at me. All I right. Can't, <laughs> I can't go to those places. Yeah. <laughs> I can't go to those places yet. Oh, well. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. In six months, I will. Really? Wait. No, you're going to be 20. Three months. No, I turned 21 you're this, gonna... this year. Really? Yeah, July 30th, man. Nice. Good job. Maybe I'll buy you a drink. Uh, I actually can't drink. Oh, you're the, okay. Yeah, I, I can't drink anything still because my brain is bad. Okay. And if I do, then I die. Oh. So. So. Please buy me a drink. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Right. Uh, no, you should buy me one of those Zevia sodas. You know, the sugar-free stuff. Uh, oh. Uh, okay. Because <laughs> I also I'm avoiding sugar these days. Yeah. You know how it is. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> you <don't> know. How. <laughs> oh, I know sugar is kind of whack, but uh, honestly, it's a lot better than some of the uh, carni- ca- um, the other crap they put in, just like fake sugar. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Anyways. This is not a health show. This is just a random morning <laughs> show where I'm talking about events. Yeah, and let's uh, kick some of the events off for your Thursday. Um, so let's talk about some Thursday stuff. Uh, family fun time at the YMCA. Um, they usually do this Tuesday, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. But they do this from 9 a.m. to about 11.30 a.m. And this is for families. I used to work at those. Yeah. And, and my brother. How many people would usually show up to the family fun times? Oh, man. Um, on average, I, maybe like... Five, anywhere from like five to ten families. It really yeah. just depends on like. Yeah, and it's twenty. Day. It's twenty-two dollars for like your whole family unit. Yeah, yeah. And like, of course, if you're a Y membership, then you don't really have to pay, right? Yeah. Like, cause um, you know, you pay your dues. Yeah, with your if you got a, like a Y family membership, yeah. you can just. I just I just remember going to YMCA a lot when I was younger, and um, I, I just remember it, like the, the constant. Like, they, they don't care if you don't have a membership a lot of times. They're just like, well, you can come in today, but... Yeah, well, you, you get, like, a couple of... Freebies? Well, there's, like, a guest pass, and then... Oh. I don't know. Yeah. They might have updated their policy since then. But, of course, wa- work in this cold weather, snowy outside, if you're not going out skiing and recreating, a lot of indoor fun at the YMCA, but also you have a Roots, Accurate Sports Center, you got Mismo Gymnastics, and the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. There's a bunch of your indoor fun where your kids can stay active um, if they're not in school already. So, yeah. um, hands on science. Again, um, Spectrum Discovery is doing bubbles. They have a new science uh, experiment every single day. School's out camp at the YMCA. Uh, Thursday, um, it's parent teacher conference day, and I think there's a couple schools that have the school days off for Thursday, Friday because yeah. of parent teacher conferences. And they're going to be doing a camp at the YMCA. And it starts at 11. Uh, Lego Club. I used to do that. Missoula, Missoula Public Library, Lego Club. If your kid is under 12, they have to be an accompanied by an adult. But other than that, they're free to just play with Legos at the Lego Club from 3.30 to 5 at the Dragon Rug in the children's area. I used to love doing that. And then our very own Jack Catmull's dad, Tom Catmull, will be playing at Draftworks Brewing uh, tomorrow night from 5 to 8. I always like to give him a plug. Yeah, I like that you started out with Jack. Well, because <laughs> like, it's like everybody knows Jack Catmull. Yeah, everybody knows. <laughs> but nobody Jack. knows his dad, the musician that yeah. basically goes all around the state of Montana and <laughs> plays for everybody. But yeah, he's, he, you know, Jack's dad, he'll be playing the draft works tomorrow yeah, night because you know the, 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 even jack's band you know i never refer to his carpool it's like jack and the carpools yeah jack and the <laughs> yeah my uh some of my siblings used to play with tom yeah he he likes to work with a lot of people i think yeah. didn't he work with john floridas too oh i'm sure because john floridas is yeah. like one of those uh, also staples in the city of missoula that he was voted one of the best solo musicians yeah. in in missoula also, by the like, by the former independent out. like Probably, I think he worked with John Sporman too. 
This sounds uh, about right. Best bassist in town. Oh yeah, James Borman's great. He, oh. yeah, he's he's just wonderful. Fantastic. They did um, and Josh Borman. Because uh, doesn't Sporman have a band called like Radio Static or something? Like there's a. I just don't know the name of his band. He, he played um, in this like, short band that um, my brothers Pat or my brother Pat and my sisters Catherine Liz did. They called like Grandfather Glenn after oh. our grandpa. Nice. Um, and they have a few videos. Um, on YouTube of them just like playing with Sporman and Josh Farmer. Oh yeah, Josh Farmer's played with everybody too. I, I forgot her name. I went to college with Josh Farmer. Um, he dropped out to pursue more of his individual music yeah. career. Yeah. Cause he, but he was in college for about the first year and then he so did his own thing. Oh yeah, he does such a great job. He does a, a lot of uh, guitar things with kids and does a lot yeah. of good things. But you know, this is just kind of like the music scene in Missoula. Uh, just, we're just talking a little bit about that. But let's hop on over. We're talking about the Hubster Network. It's a soft launch. Uh, this is a new uh, organization here in the city of Missoula, which is helping boost the economy while working with uh, influential people, coming together once a month to support local business in creating sustainable solutions to local problems. Missoula is a great place to live, but it isn't always the most affordable. They want to build local businesses so they can create good paying jobs and provide effective solutions that can complete ma with major realtors, uh, re retailers, sorry, um, not the house sales, because yeah, you know, no. realtors are pretty common for sure. But it's yeah. time to put Missoula's local economy into higher gear, according to the Hubster Network, which will be uh, doing a soft launch tomorrow night at 5.30 at the Sunburst Community Center, which is 1511 South Reserve Russell Street. Which, you know, there's so many community centers. I, I don't know which ones are which. So yeah, that's kind of what's happening there. Uh, just so you know, there's uh, Megan uh, McNamer is doing a reading and signing of her book, Home Everywhere, which is published by Black Lawrence Press. So she'll be at Shakespeare and Company tomorrow night at 7. The 25th annual uh, Putnam County Spelling Bee. It's a play, and it's uh, it's going to be at the MCT. And of course, if you haven't, uh, if you don't like their page, you probably you probably been seeing some advertisements on Facebook and stuff like that. But this is uh, Missoula Community Theater presents a tale of middle school. Middle school is the glorious period of adolescence where the awkward comedy of uh, puberty reigns less than supreme. It is a stress of competing the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee worse than the pressure of being an imperfect tween? So the six uh, less than confident final contestants, all played by adults. Uh, the reckless uh, fate uh, of word difficulty is probably not as hilarious as it is for the audience observing it. So it's a spelling bee play. And it's yeah. going to be at the MCT, yeah, uh, 7.30 p.m. tonight, I believe, since they're going to be playing it this weekend. It'll be 2 p.m. matinees on Saturday and Sunday with an earlier evening show on Sunday at 6.30. And I just remember that from my MCT days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we both auditioned for Newsies. Oh, yeah. We both didn't get in Newsies. No, that's okay. Like I know, it's okay. There's a hundred There's a hundred times better people that are in the show. 133 auditions from what I remember. There was a lot of people there. Yeah, uh, but a few of my friends made it in. I'm super excited. Yeah. And I noticed if, he, if he, it was the same demographic, I would have to say about 90 of the people were female, 40 of them were, bo were yeah, male. Yeah, like it's rough to get into that kind of show because it's like very male centric. 90%, I think there's like. There's a couple female roles, but. There's the, the nuns from the beginning, which they make like one appearance in one of the songs from what I remember. And, and I think there's like the, the and there's the main female. Uh, and there's a lot of, there's a, there was a lot of competition just with the main female. I noticed. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I saw so the girls, all the girls auditioning for them. It's like, I know all these girls were like kind of like the main stake in a lot of the shows that I was in yeah. beforehand, but they're, they're, they're all going against each other. It's going to be very interesting to see how this show turns out because I only know it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And Joe Martinez is the director, so it's, it's automatically going to oh, yeah. be awesome. Yeah, Joe Martinez. He yeah. makes great stuff. Yeah, he did the, uh, um, no, uh, you know, he did the last Christmas Carol show, yeah, which is weird. Yeah, yeah, which is weird because usually it's uh, Michael McGill who directs most of the shows. Yeah. yeah. He does most of the Christmas shows, but I guess he there was a show that he really wanted to do, so they did a, a swap. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. And I think this year uh, Michael did uh, Elf. Oh, nice. Yep, so Elf, yeah, so of course, you know, New Year's Eve is going to be the last show that will wrap up the season. Right now, they're doing the show of the uh, Spelling Bee. Yeah, Putnam County. Yep, and then, of course, the last show will basically uh, start in late April, early May. Yeah. Which is crazy because it's like mid-March, and they just started a rehearsal just this week. Yeah, it's kind of a tight schedule for such a big play, but, um, I mean, they have some, like, amazing talent. They got a lot of talent, for sure. Yeah. Uh, shout and it's out a, oh. to my boy Elijah Miller, Ezra Erwin, and Noah Vandewettering. All big characters. Yeah. 
And then, of course, Diego. Oh, yeah. Diego's in it, too. Yeah. (laughs) Diego's great. Yeah. Yep. And I am super excited to see them. I'm hoping to do tech for it. Yep. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, if you're going to do tech, I'd probably help out with that, too. Maybe we can do tech brothers. Yeah. yeah. Tech bros. bros. Oh. All right. Anyways. uh, (laughs) So that's uh, that you just saw us planning in front of you guys. So (laughs) it's always nice to have someone to vent off of because sometimes I feel like when you're talking to yourself, it's. It, it kind of kind of be crazy, but yeah, last I event, last yeah. event for your Thursday night it is the first Thursday of the month, which means Union Club is doing their homegrown comedy night. Nine thirty p.m. Uh, is when they start kicking it off. You show up at nine a nine p.m. You can kind of like you can sign up for it's like an open mic kind of a comedy night. It's all geared towards comedy, hosted by John Howard. I was just thinking about doing that yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's only like two three minutes it's like you know you just it's they keep it fairly short per person oh, okay. i went to one or two of their comedy nights it's really funny uh especially right now because they're doing a competition the roxy is doing their like yeah. competition i think yeah. they just did round two last weekend and so it's always fun to do the competition but a lot of times if you see one like i always like to wait until the very finals because then you get to the, the very best comedy because if you already see yeah. the people who pass on to the finals they a lot of them repeat the same jokes that they did in the first rounds Oh, yeah. Because, you know, when you have a tight five, you don't – you, you got to keep the tight five. You can't just yeah. alter – you can't have a, a new bit every single show. Yeah, you have well, to refine the bit. Yeah, I'm thinking if I go in uh, for the for the um, open mic. Yeah, it's just open I, mic. I'd probably just, like, go off the top of my head, you know? And, of course, at the end of the – and, of course, another comedy night is always the last Wednesday of the month, which is at the Badlander. And that's – it's called uh, Stand Up Revival. Okay. And it goes from like seven to nine, and then they have karaoke after nine. Oh, okay. Cool. So you know, fun night. You know, you do your jokes, and then afterwards you can do some comedy uh, or, or karaoke, which is also comedy in yeah, a way. Yeah, yeah. karaoke pretty is, gets pretty funny. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the show. We had a full show for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to um, play us out? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've got. I've already got my my keys selected. Uh, awesome. Love this Yamaha, man. All right, guys. So um, for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramph. 